Hi guys, hope everybody's doing well. Today we're going to go back to the early 80s and talk about Operation Greylord. That was devastating to the Chicago outfit. Several Cook County crooked judges got indicted for accepting bribes for years. Once the mob lost their political influence, it weakened them. And that led to other trials like Silver Shovel, Operation Gambat, Higher Truck Program, and others. Now, back in the glory days of the Chicago outfit, when they had full control of all the courts and police stations throughout Cook County, uh, they could easily make parking tickets, traffic tickets go away, DUIs, you could pay $500 up to a murder case, or if you had 10 grand and knew the right people and got the right judge, case dismissed. This went on for years, and let's hope it's gotten better. Now, one thing all the defendants, mostly the crooked judges at the Operation Greylord trial, one of the uh, common traits, aside from obviously they're all greedy, but they were all big time drinkers, a lot of these judges, which is no surprise because a lot of the top defense attorneys I know in Chicago are drinkers as well. They just, They can just control themselves a little bit better. Now, one of the first trials I started to follow was the Greylord trials. I didn't go to the trial, but I followed in the news, in the newspapers. This was a three-year, eight-month federal undercover investigation on corrupt state officials, police officers, and Cook County judges. Over 92 state officials were indicted, convicted, either through plea deals or trials. This helped cripple the Chicago outfit. Two top U.S. attorneys here on the left, you got Dan Webb on the right, Thomas Sullivan. They were the prosecutors during the Greylord trials, and Dan Webb said in opening statements that the Greylord investigation showed that Cook County was the largest, most corrupt court system in the United States. Both of these gentlemen eventually became top defense lawyers representing key outfit guys. Now, a couple of the charges in the Greylord trial, a few of these judges, especially some of the older guys that were on their way out who, and who had enough money, who took enough bribes over the years, they would just accept small bribes in exchange for whores. A lot of the outfit guys would send some of the ladies from the various strip clubs to service some of the a grand total of 93 public officials were indicted by the Great Lord trial, including 17 judges, 48 lawyers, 10 Crook County sheriffs, eight cops, eight court officials, and one state senator, James DeLeo, Chicago Outfit Associate. Three of the judges that were indicted committed suicide. The rest of the judges were sentenced to 10 to 16 years in federal prison. Here's disgraced, corrupt judge Richard LaFour. Here's him uh, leaving court one day at the Dirksen Federal Building. You can see by the look on his face, he's not too happy. Uh, this judge was sentenced to 12 years in prison for accepting thousands of dollars in bribes. And they had two systems of justice in Cook County, those who paid and those who didn't pay. Here's one of the 90 plus defendants that was convicted in the Great Lord trial. You got Chicago Outfit Associate John DiArco. He was convicted on several charges of racketeering, mail fraud, and collecting over $200,000 in bribes. Actually went to his sentencing where he started crying in front of, in front of the federal judge, but the judge gave him no mercy and handed him down 12 years. No, nobody can outsmart the feds. They've got more money, more resources, and more power than God. They use the same electronic surveillance they use to go after all the mob bosses in the country that they did for the judges. They actually got a warrant. They were able to place uh, bugs inside the judge's chamber, getting the judge, bagmen, and lawyers on tape. Now, believe it or not, these are the mover and shakers 
of the city of Chicago and the state of Illinois. On the right there, you got two made members of the Chicago Outfit of the 26th Street crew, Alderman Pat Marcy from the powerful First Ward and his good buddy, Alderman Fred Rohde. I went to their trial back in the 90s. Uh, these guys control all your judges, all the aldermen, all the police, and handed out all the sweetheart contracts. Here's one of my favorites, one of the most powerful men in Chicago, Alderman Fred Rohde. He got indicted in the Gambat trial when that low-life scumbag Bob Cooley wore a wire and testified against him and Pat Marcy. They controlled most of your judges in Cook County, your businessmen, your policemen, and were made members of the Chicago Outfit's 26th Street crew. Now here you got one of the most powerful men in the city. You got a made member of the Chicago Outfit, 26th Street crew guy, Alderman Pat Marcy. He controlled the entire First Ward. He had major influence on all your Cook County judges, the, the police department, the businessman. He was actually a machine gunner for Al Capone. And on the left, top mob attorney, my good friend, Terrence Giuseppe. Here's Crook County Judge Frank Wilson. He presided over the Harry Alleman trial. It was a bench trial where Harry allegedly killed the union official Bill Logan. Through the bag man and corrupt lawyer and the guys in the first ward, Pat Marcy, they bribed this judge $10,000 to find Harry Alleman, alleged hitman for Chicago outfit, not guilty. Years later, when the judge retired, he committed suicide. Here's Harry Elliman, serious hitman for Chicago Outfit, walking out of the criminal courts building after he was found not guilty by Judge Frank Wilson for killing Bill Logan. Everybody in the courtroom was stunned. And then years later, they actually threw out the double jeopardy case and charged Harry Elliman again with the murder of Bill Logan because the first case was fixed. I went to his second trial at 26 in California where he was found guilty. Now, a couple of the allegations during the Operation Greylord was that some of these judges, especially the older guys that were on their way out, who had enough money, they had a cushy pension to look forward to, they were more interested in sexual favors. So through the First Ward, the Chicago Outfit would send some of the local strippers over to the judges' suites, and they would perform sexual favors. Some of these judges were also big-time gamblers with the Outfit. Here's one of the most corrupt criminal court buildings in the entire country, right there in 26 in California, adjacent to the notorious Cook County Jail. This is where all your corruption went on at the Cook County Criminal Courts building there. And in the basement of this building is where they store all the evidence for upcoming trials, guns, drugs, etc. And years ago, a lot of the evidence was stolen out of the evidence room, resold on the streets. Now, back in the day, if you had the right connections, you could beat a murder rap for $10,000. An example of that is Shorty Lamantia, associate of the 26th Street crew. He was talked about a lot at the Family Secrets trial. His son, an old friend of mine, Rocky Lamantia, years ago in the 70s, accidentally shot his girlfriend. They bribed the judge ten grand. The judge found Rocky not guilty of murder. Now, here's the prosecution team at the Great Lord Trials. These guys are some of the best in the business. I'll put our U.S. attorneys against any other U.S. attorney in the country. They very seldom lose a case. And what's interesting is years later, they switch side and actually become top defense attorney, making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Now, the best part of any trial is the opening statements and the closing arguments. That pretty much sums up the case. In opening statements at the Greylord trial, the prosecution said that this was the largest, most corrupt misconduct in courtrooms in the entire country. In other words, Cook County had the most corrupt officials in the United States. Now, back when this photo was taken, you got some of the most powerful men in the country. 
hands down. On the left, Pat Marcy became powerful alderman in the first ward. In the middle with a nice tan, boss, constantly of the Chicago outfit, you got Tony Arcardo, his underboss, Jack Cerrone, Gussie Alex, and then you got Joey Upa, most powerful guys in the country. Now here we got uh, Chicago outfit associate, Gus Alex there on the left, and crime boss, Sam Carlisi. Gus Alex, as we all know, was the political fixer for the Chicago outfit. He controlled all the judges, all the aldermen, all the police. He had close connections with Vice President Agnew, all the way up to President Nixon, the White House. Gussie also controlled all the mob's money in the Swiss bank accounts. I went to his trial in the early 90s where he was found guilty. Now, when disgraced Governor Rod Blagojevich was removed from office, Pat Quinn became our new governor. This was great news for the Chicago outfit. And one of the first things Pat Quinn did was he pardoned most of the defendants in the Grey Lord trial. And this guy had over $300,000 in campaign contributions donated by key members of the Chicago outfit. 